Good morning to all of you today. What a joy it is to be here in another segment of Shelter Daily in His Word. Today, we're going to continue our discussion that we had yesterday from Psalms chapter 1. We're going to be looking at what a blessed life looks like according to what the psalmist was writing and how we can walk in a blessed life with God. And We're just dissecting this a little bit at a time, taking a look at all the things that the psalmist is saying. A lot of times when we read the Bible, we just kind of read through it. We don't really stop and ponder what they're actually saying. So I just wanted us to pause here. I love the Psalms. I love reading the Psalms. The Psalms were songs. They're actually songs that were sung. And uh, I don't know how that they sang this. I don't, I have no, we don't have a record of a recording, if you will, of them singing this actual Psalm. But we know that it was a Psalm. That's why it's a song. Uh, that was being sung, and, and perhaps this was something uh, that they would rise up, you know, the psalmist would rise up, and he'd begin to play his harp, or, or they would sing together as a congregation, and they would just sing this together, blessed is the man. So we're going to look at that this morning a little bit more, and we're looking at uh, seven different uh, things that the Bible talks about here uh, when it comes to the blessed life, and what, what he means by the blessed life. And so we're going to look at this description of these things. And so uh, before we do, though, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Uh, I don't know what your need is today, but I do know this. I do know that the God that we serve is a God who is able to meet any need that you have in your life. And, and let me just say this as well. This evening at our seven o'clock prayer time, we would love for you, if you have a prayer need, we would love for you to let us know what it is so that we can pray with you about it at our prayer time tonight at seven o'clock. We'd love for you to join with us. It is a live prayer time. Uh, we uh, take a few moments in the Word, and then we just pray. We have different ones who target prayers, specific things. So if you have a need in your life that you need prayer for, please join with us 7 p.m. tonight. It'll be live on Facebook. It'll be live uh, on our Zoom uh, channel as well. You can join with us there. Uh, we also post it later so you can join with us. So if you have a need, just go, you go to jubileeworshipcenter.com. You can mention it right here today. Uh, you can just uh, put it in the comment box. Pray for, pray with me about whatever it may be in your life. We'd love to pray with you. So let's go to the Lord right now. Father, we just ask God that you'll move today in our time. We pray that you'll bless us. We pray that you'll speak to us. We pray that you will just allow the word to penetrate our hearts, open our hearts as we walk with you. Let us, God, understand what it means Lord, when we came to you, Lord, we came in our sin, but you redeemed us from our sin. And God, because you redeemed us, now we can walk in faith. We can walk in the joy of the Lord. So today, God, I just pray that you'll just bless the word. Lord, let it be nourishment to our spirits, we pray. God, we just ask you that we'll grow in faith, grow in knowledge, that we can go out, God, and we can do the work that you've called us to do. We can live out, Lord, every day to the world what it means to be blessed of the Lord. God, we pray it in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. So if you have your Bibles, again, go to the book of Psalms, the very first chapter, the very first song. This is what it said. Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the way of the sinner, nor sits in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in this law, in his law, he meditates day and night. He will be like a tree planted by the river of water, brings forth fruit in its season, whoever or whose leaf also will not wither, and whatever he does will prosper. The ungodly are not so, but are like the chaff which the wind drives away. Therefore the ungodly shall not stand in the judgment, nor the sinners in the congregation of the righteous. For the Lord knows the way of the righteous, but the way of the ungodly he shall perish. All right? So the, the, the way of the ungodly perishes. So here we're looking at what a blessed life is like. Blessed is the man. Or, as we said yesterday, oh, the blessedness of the man. Oh, would you look at the blessedness of the man. Look at what happens when one serves the Lord. I remember Matthew 5, 1 through 12. Jesus, you know, we call these the Beatitudes, or blessed is the one, blessed is the poor, blessed is the mourners, blessed are the meek, so on and so forth. Uh, he talks about this. They're the ones. He says, listen, rejoice with exceeding joy. Be glad you are, you are God's. Be glad who you are. And then 
we, we looked at it. So, so the, the Lord comes along and he t- kind of takes, you know, what the psalmist is saying is, is you know, uh, the, the man who's blessed of the Lord looks like this. And then we looked at it and we said, okay, there's seven things that, that makes him, uh, that we see about this blessed man. One, vitality. He's like a tree, right? The life. We see life. When we see the, the, the one who knows the Lord Jesus Christ, it's one who is living, right? I've come that you might have life and that you might have it more abundantly, Jesus said. So we have vitality. Not only do we have vitality, but we have security. He, he's a tree planted, all right? You know what happens to a tree when you uproot the tree over and over again? It dies. The roots can no longer get nourishment, right? So it has to be planted. In order for a tree to grow, it has to be planted. There has to be a root system that goes down into the ground. It has to go down in there. Why? Because it's looking for a, a stream. It's looking for water. It's looking for nourishment. You know, there's a lot of people today, you know, that they don't know how to be planted. They just bounce from place to place, thing to thing, you know, whatever the latest and the greatest as they go to it, whatever. You know, and it gets, it, 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 to me, that, that's just that's not a good way to live your life. You know, if you get in a church, a body, you get planted and rooted. That's where you grow. That's where your growth comes from. It doesn't grow when, you know, at the first sign of a wind blowing, you just up yourself and move. And that, that's not how it goes. And you need, to, you need to root yourself. You need to get rooted in. You need to be there. You know, and there's a lot of people that just drift around to whatever little thing is going on, whoever it may be, whatever the latest thing is, they pop up and they go to it. You know what? You're not going to grow that way. You're going to be pretty much stagnant. You're always going to look for something to feed you, to try to help you, to get you where you need to be. Instead of learning how to walk in a blessed life, this is what the, what the, the uh, psalmist was trying to tell us, that you need to learn how to be rooted and, and, and securely planted in Christ Jesus, securely planted where your roots can go deep down. Why? Because there's security there. And when there's security there, when your roots are deep, then all of a sudden what you have is you have this wonderful capacity to produce because there's a river that flows. You know, I want to, I want to, I want to stay rooted. I want to stay where my roots grow deep, where I go deep down inside. Why? Because when the storms of life come, when things happen to me, when things go on, I want to know that I am secured because I know that he is the one who's watching over me. I know that he's the one that takes care of me. And I know that my spirit bears witness with his spirit. We are heirs of God. We're joint heirs with Christ Jesus. And we know this. That we, are, we are the ones who are blessed with all kind of spiritual blessings. And, and we have the abundant supply of God because He supplies all of our needs according to His riches in glory by Christ Jesus. Philippians 4.19 tells us that we know that we dwell in all the fullness of the Godhead bodily because we are complete in Him according to Colossians 2, 9 and 10. We are complete in Jesus Christ. And because of that completion that we have in Him, now we find ourselves fruitful, uh, where we're fertile, rather. We find fertility in our lives. We find that our, our, we, He yields its fruit. So He's like a tree planted by the river of water whose, whose roots, whose branches yield fruit. Your life is to yield love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, meekness, faith, temperance, self-control. Against such is no law. This is what you're supposed to be doing. And you understand that God, you didn't choose God. God chose you. He chose you and He wants you. He needs you. He, he brought you out of your darkness into the marvelous light. Why? Because He's chosen you. He's chosen you for a purpose. He's got a plan for your life. What is that plan? That plan is not so that your roots don't go down deep. No, the, the plan is for your roots to go deeply down. You know, it's one of the things that I, that I notice about, uh, you know, there's a difference between an oak tree and a palm tree. You ever notice that? You notice that a lot of times oak trees, as big as they are, a lot of times the wind will come and knock them over. But palm trees are, are, are developed and, and, and designed where they can bend. They can literally bend all the way to the ground and come straight back up. Why? Because they have a root system. And it's interesting because even their root system goes deeper than the sand they're in. They go way deep down inside the ground. Why? Because they know they're made, they're designed for it. They're designed for it. God brings fruit, fruit off of their vines, and there's, there's fruit there, and that's what God wants. He chose you. He, cho- he knew exactly what He was doing with you. He knew exactly what He was going to do. And, he, and, and listen to this. Now, there is a, there's, there, there's a, there's a, a proprietary uh, thing that goes on here uh, where, where that, 
that there's a fruit in season, right? The leaves will produce fruit. When will it? It will produce it in its season. Now think about this. The man, this man, this this blessed man brings forth the right fruit at the right time. That is, uh, when 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 he's going through a time of suffering, he doesn't get all anxious and bent out of shape. Instead, he's patient in suffering. When he's going through a trial, he doesn't lose it and fall back and say, oh, I can't make it. Instead, his faith grows during the midst of the trials. That whenever there is, when there, whenever there's, there's uh, 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 times of, of discontent in the world that he lives in, he doesn't find his, his purpose in the world. He finds his joy in the Lord. This is what God calls us to be. This is the blessed man. I love what Matthew 7 says. It says, Beware of false prophets who come to you in sheep's clothing. Inward later they are ravening, ravenous wolves. You will know them by, the, by their fruit. You'll know. You'll know who they are by their fruit. Men, do men gather grapes from thorn bushes or figs from thistles? Even so, every good tree bears good fruit. But the bad, watch this, but the bad tree bears bad fruit. A good, true, a good tree cannot bear bad fruit, nor can a bad tree bear good fruit. Every tree that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. Therefore, by their fruits you will know them. How are you in this, when the seasons of life change? What is it like for you when seasons come and go? When there's a winter time and then a spring time and then a fall? And then a summer. What do you, how do you, you know, how is it for you when, you're, when your darker seasons come into your life? When there's times when things, when you're not always on the mountaintop. See, this is, this is the difference between the one who's blessed of the Lord and one who walks in the blessing of God and the one who, who doesn't understand that. So what he's telling us is this. He says, look, I want you to know that, that when you're planted by the river of water, you'll bring forth fruit in the season. Whatever season you're in. Whatever thing, there's going to be fruit. Positive fruit will come. Love will come out. When there's hate, love will show. Now think about the, the hatred that we're seeing in our world right now. So much hate. And what do we do as the church? Who are we? As, but we're blessed of God. If we're the ones who walk in the blessing of the Lord, we are to walk in the love of God in the midst of the hate that goes on. Joy. When there's sorrow. You know, it doesn't mean that we don't have sorrow. It doesn't mean that we don't feel things you know in a in the negative way but we understand that that our life and the things that we live are not fixed on the things of this world or on the conditions that are going on in the world that we live in instead everything is fixed our roots are deeply planted in Christ Jesus so there is this there's this this idea of proprietary this is the where where there's a a, a season for everything and for every season there's something God's going to do and what we have to learn to do is we have to learn to understand that the fruit that needs to be bearing, what kind of fruit needs to come forth in this season of my life? What is God trying to produce in me right now? What is it God's trying to show and reveal in my life? I'm going through this moment in my life. I'm going through these times in my life. But what is it that God is trying to show me? See, if you go by the way of the world, what you'll do is you'll act just like the world acts. You'll do just like the world does. Things go negative. What do you do? You act negative. When the world's happy, you're happy. When the world's not happy, you're not happy. Why? Because you're letting the world gauge you. Don't let the world be the gauge. Let your spirit man and God and Christ in you, let him be the spirit. Let his spirit be the gauge of your life. Let him tell you, you know what? You can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. You are more than a conqueror through him. Right? These are the things that we need to do. This is the, this is the fruit that bears in our life. These are the things. Love, joy, peace, long suffering. Man, when troubles are around me, when, I'm, when, when trouble assails my life, when things are around me, I can be at peace. He will be peace for me. Peace isn't something. Peace is someone. And he becomes my peace. He said, my peace I leave with you. My peace I give unto you. Not as the world gives. That's what he told his disciples in John. He said, when you see troubled times, you see all these troubles, don't run and hide from it. Now, they didn't do very good with it. As many of us, we don't do very good with it. But what he's trying to tell us is that this is how this is how you live a blessed life. This is a blessed life. This is the season. When seasons come, seasons will come and seasons will go. Summer will be here. I know, I know the fall. I know that right after summer, what comes up? Fall. What is fall? Fall is harvest. Fall is a great time. 
there's some great things that come out of the fall. All right? But you know the days are going to get shorter. You know that. And what comes after fall? The winter. What happens in the winter? Things lay dormant. You know this. You know, you know that you're going to have seasons like this. You know that you know that there's going to be times in your life where you're going to be high on a mountaintop and there's going to be times when you're low in a valley. You know this. So what are you doing? How are you? What kind of fruit will you produce when you're on the mountain? Because what the fruit you produce on a mountain is not the same fruit you produce when you're in the valley. There's certain fruit that can only come in certain places. You know, you can't grow, you can't grow fruit, you know, all kinds of fruit. You can't grow tropical fruit in, in, in northwest Indiana. Not unless you, unless you condition things for that to happen. You've got to create the atmosphere for it to be. What we have to learn to do is we have to create an atmosphere in spite of the fact of what we're in, what season we're in. We've got to create an atmosphere. Why? Because God wants to bring, He wants us to bring forth fruit in its season. He wants us to bring forth, He wants us to be fruitful. He wants us to be fruitful. He wants you to be fruitful. He wants me to be fruitful. He wants us to be able to produce the fruit that He's called us to produce. <clears throat> you know, we're, he, he, <laughs> when we think about all this stuff, I think about all these different ways in which God talks about this. He said, look, you're, 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 you're going to be a fruitful man. I don't want you to just produce some fruit. I want you to produce, produce more fruit, he said. He talked about when he says, I'm the vine, you are the branches. We've been grafted in. He said, every, every branch in me produces fruit. And then the, 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 the father comes along and he prunes on that. And he, and he, why? Because he wants it to produce more fruit. And then he doesn't want to just produce more fruit. He wants it to produce much fruit. And this, is the, this is the progression. He wants us to go. You know, you don't just produce much fruit right off the bat. There are a lot of people great at sprinting, but there's a lot, a lot of people that are really good at marathons. And a lot of times, you know, we want to hurry up and get to where we got to go and get it done and get it over with. Sometimes, you know, what God takes is he says, I'm going to order your steps, follow me, watch what I do, do what I do, live out what way I live. If you'll do that, what happens is then all of a sudden fruit will begin to produce in your life. As that fruit, as that fruit is, is produced and, 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 you know, you come along and you, and you pull that fruit off the vine and, and people partake of that fruit, right? And then what does what happens? Then he comes along and he prunes on it. He does more work. And what happens? Then the next time, more fruit is produced. You know, just because you put an apple tree in the ground doesn't mean it's going to produce apples right off the bat. You have to tend to it. You have to take care of it. You have to do some things in order for it to produce. But one day, all of a sudden, you go out there, all, all of a sudden, there's fruit on it. But if you if you don't tend to the fruit, if you don't do that, Fruit can die on the vine. You've got to be careful because what happens is a lot of people who are living their lives right now, and they're going through seasons, they don't realize that the Lord wants them to produce fruit and He wants their fruit to be, He wants their fruit to be tasted by others. Come and taste and see that the Lord is good. But sometimes we hide things and we hide it away and we don't. And what happens is the fruit that we have dies on the vine. That's not a good thing. So here we have this. Here we have this, and this is what Jesus was talking about. And he, and, he tell, and he warns us, he says, look, he said, I want you to know that there are those who are out there, who are out there that, that they look like one thing, but they're not. Inside there's something else. And the reason, and the, how you can know is by the fruit that they bear. This is very important. Because what Jesus is saying is that you've got to be careful because there's some people, they may, they may speak really eloquent words, they may have a great charisma about them, but their hearts are, are they're evil on the inside. And what will happen is that over time, you'll begin to see. You may not see it right away, but you'll begin to see it. You'll begin to know that the fruit they're bearing is not the fruit that I, that I want them to bear. It's not the fruit of the Spirit. They don't conduct themselves in the proper manner. They don't live their lives in the proper manner. They don't care what they say. They don't care what they do. They might say one thing around church folk, but they get out there in the world and they act just like the world acts. It's one of the things that really disturbs me about this generation now. It's almost like that it doesn't matter what you say, what comes out of your mouth, but it does matter. It doesn't matter what you see with your eyes, but it does matter. It doesn't matter what you hear with your ears, but it does matter. Why? Because if you bring garbage in, garbage is going to eventually come out. This is the thing you have to be careful of. It doesn't matter, you know, he said, though I speak with the tongue of men and of angels, but I don't have what? I don't have love. The fruit of love. If the fruit of love is not in my life if I don't really love people if I could say I love people you know if I love them but I'm not willing to to bend down low and help them get them up out of the dirt then I don't really love if I if I say I, I love but then I go and I turn my back on those who are in need then I don't really love 
this is what the Lord is warning us about. He's telling us, and Jesus is saying, listen, there's going to be people that will come along. and They're going to be false prophets. They're going to look like they're a sheep. They're not. They're going to, in, in, in fact, if you read in the New Testament, you'll read where Jude says sometimes they'll even sit at your very table and they'll sit at the Lord's Supper and everything. They'll do everything, be partakers of everything. And yet the whole purpose that they're there is for no other reason than to bring destruction into your life. The Lord says, beware. Watch the fruit they bear. You don't bear apples on a pear tree. You don't, you know, a, a, a good tree will produce good fruit. A bad tree will produce bad fruit. That's just the way it is. And it will not be the other way around. A good tree cannot produce bad fruit, and a bad tree cannot produce good fruit. This is what he's talking about. But here's the thing. If I walk in the blessed life, my life will be a life where in every season that I go through, whatever season that I'm in, and you know what? You're going to find out, and all of us can attest to this, especially as you get older. As I've gotten older, what I've realized is that that my life in my 60s is not the life I had when I was in my 20s. Not, that, not because of the fact that I'm, I, I was young then and now I'm older. That's a part of it. My age has a part to do with it. But the reality is, is that what I was thinking about, what I was doing in my 20s, is not the same thing. I have a different set of priorities in my 60s than I did when I have in my 20s. And many of you, many of you millennials and many of you Xers that are out there, same thing's going to happen to you. One day, one day you're not going to be you're not going to be 30. One day you're going to be 60. One day you're not going to be 20. You're going to be 50. That's just the way it is. And when you wake up to that, you're going to realize that, you know what, seasons change, times change, things are different. Everything around us changes. But what kind of fruit are you going to produce in the season that you're in? I'm sure all of us know what happens to uh, couples uh, many times. You know, I've seen this happen so many times where older men marry younger women and younger women marry older men. They do it. They do this because these, you know, there's these crazy dynamics that happen with people's lives. And what is, they're looking for something, they're not going to find it in nobody else. They're trying to find significance in others, and it's not going to happen there. You've got to understand your season. You've got to understand where you're at. I've heard people talk about midlife crisis and all these different kinds of things. And yes, I know that we go through that. And the thing is, is that you have to understand that if you are planted, if you are rooted, if you are deeply rooted in Jesus Christ, everything changes. He'll produce good fruit in your life if you'll allow him to. So ask yourself this question. What season are you in? What season are you in? Because whatever season you're in right now is a season that you need to produce a specific kind of fruit. And you need to ask the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, what fruit is needed right now? What's necessary right now? So Father, as we close out this morning, I just pray that you will, God, show us Give us an insight to those things. God, whatever season we're in, whatever season's going on in our lives, let us, Holy Spirit, be drawn into those things. God, to produce the right fruit at the right time. God, I ask it in your name, and I give you praise for it. I thank you for it, because I know that you're well able, God. And I give you praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, if you have enjoyed today's session, I hope you tune in with us tomorrow as we, as we uh, continue this discussion. Lord will bless you and keep you and just uh, be with you. Look forward to seeing you tonight at our prayer time. And uh, check out Jubilee Worship Center, jubileeworshipcenter.com. Again, if you don't have a home church that you go to, please, by all means, come check out A Place of New Beginnings, uh, Jubilee Worship Center. And we'd love to have you be a part of what we're doing. If you like what you're hearing, hit the like button. Share it with somebody. Let us know what God's been doing. And thank you again for joining with us for another Shelter Daily in His Word. Oh, it chases me down, fights till I'm found, leaves the 99. I couldn't earn it, and I don't deserve it, still you.